on a super fun technique on how to spin coiled yarn. Um, I have a big hunk of yarn here from Crown Mountain Fibers. It's hand dyed Targi top and it's been sitting in my stash asking to be something playful. So I thought I would do a little coil spinning and show you how it's done. So the first thing I want to talk just a little bit about is what kind of yarn is good to use for this technique. I prefer um, a yarn that has been drafted out just a little bit, a yarn that is fluffy and squishy, that is generally worsted, oh, sorry, not yarn, fiber, <laughs> a fiber that is worsted prepared, so all the fibers are going in the same direction. I also like it to have a little bit of crimp so it easily grabs on itself. You can do this with any weights, uh, or sorry, any staple length. A smaller staple length is going to have a smaller, shorter coil. A longer staple, le staple length you'll have to pull out longer and will end up being a longer coil. So this one has um, maybe about two and a half, three inches. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your yarn started, spinning it as you would normally. Um, you can spin whatever weight you prefer. Mine probably comes out about a fingering to a sport weight single ply. Once you get going, to make the coil, you are going to bring your finger back a little bit onto the section that has not yet been spun. Grasp it and pull enough to separate a staple length worth of fiber, right? Then you will quickly, as you are spinning, allow your fingers to loosen up enough that you can slide them over the fluff to the area where it is thinner, okay? So let me talk you through that again. You'll be spinning your normal yarn Then you will grab farther back onto the, the fiber, pull, slide, and continue to spin. So grasp, pull, slide, and spin. Grasp the top of the fluff, slide over it, and continue to spin. You can do this as often as you want. If you want to do it every three times, you spin you press your petals, then you'll have coils in the end that are closer together. You could also spread them out and do it, you know, just randomly whenever you feel like it, or maybe every 20 times you press the petals. Then the coils will end up being farther apart. So this is just the first thing you're going to do to make this coiled yarn. This is the prep stage. The coil part actually comes as you're plying it. So when I say pull, I mean to pull on the actual roving or fiber that you're spinning from. You give it a tug because you're holding on to it from the top of that fluff. You're not really letting it spin into the yarn until you relax your hands and let it slide through. When I pinch, when I grasp up here, I'm holding it tight so it won't go anywhere. And then I pull back 
to separate that staple length. So I'm just going to keep spinning like this until I'm at the end of my fiber or until I'm, I've spun as much as I need. One thing that you'll have to remember though is um, not to make coils any bigger than will fit through the orifice. So I'm flying on a, uh, flying, I am spinning on a shocked matchless with a jumbo flyer. So it has a large orifice here so that when these coils are coiled up and a little fatter, they can fit through without a problem. So if you have a spinning wheel that has a much smaller orifice, then you'll need to make smaller uh, coils or get a, a jumbo flyer. So one thing I want to point out is where often spinners will keep their keep their second hand close to the top of the fiber and have the spinning happen in between the two hands so that the twist is not going into the fiber so that you can control the size of the yarn. I am actually holding pretty far back on that fluff and allowing the spin to go into the fiber. And I'm giving just a gentle pull to draw out the yarn. And then when I want to grab hold of farther back, basically too far back into the fluff to make an even yarn, I grab into that so that I can get a hold of the, the fiber. When I start spinning, that twist wants to go to the path of least resistance, which is where it's thinnest. And it starts going into that spot. So let me show you again. It's a little easier to do as it's spinning. So I'm pulling back. I'm going to grab the top. And you see how it immediately starts going right there. Let's do that again for you. Grab the top. Pull it apart. You see how it's already spinning at that spot of least resistance. I also really like how it looks. If you have a fiber that has more than one color in it, um, like this yellow and orange, if you can make a fluff that has two colors, that twist ends up being really cool looking because it'll come out reddish, orangish, and yellow. It'll make a really cool um, coil, <laughs> kind of like that. You'll get the feel for it. You don't want too much twist going into this, this piece of fiber between your two hands because then it gets really tight and you have to pull hard to get it apart. It's just the tiniest bit up here at the top so that it's pulling on itself as you twist. So you can see it's just starting to pull out at the top. Then that's where I can grab, pull, and make a new pre-coil, I guess we'll call it, because <laughs> I keep calling it fluff. We can call it either, the fluff or the pre-coil. Okay, so I have put my bobbin full of fluff spun yarn, puff spun, I don't even know what you call it. I guess it's probably in a book somewhere. It has an official name, but I'm going to call them puffs. Um, so this is my single ply. and. I am going to now show you how to core spin it to make coils, puff coils, on top of your core yarn. Well, I'm just using a, a strong wool yarn, 
And um, if you haven't yet seen my video for core spinning, I published it just before this one, and you can see just the basics on what you're doing. Basically, you're spinning a yarn around a core. And this will enable us to get lots of little coils and big puff coils on top of a core yarn that you won't or will see, depending on how you want to spin it. So I'm going to put this over here next to me and get my core yarn started up. All I've done is made a slip knot and I'm going to put the core yarn through it and then pull that snip, slip, knot, slip knot tight and that'll hold it in place. All right, so I've got my puff spun yarn in one hand and the core yarn in my left. I'm going to hold it just like I talked about in my core spinning video in my hands right here, getting tension and pulling straight back because if you pull to the side when you're spinning, they will ply on top of each other instead of just having this uh, puff yarn spin on top of it. So I'm going to get it started. just by getting my wheel going and letting this curl on top of it. You see how it's already curling up. And just let it get going, okay? And then I will guide my yarn on top of the core, placing it so that it coils up right on top of it. Let me get in closer so you can see that. So the yarn that I had spun is very fine, so it won't be extremely easy to cover up this core yarn. You can see some of the white coming through. If you spin it a little bit thicker, then it's really easy to cover it up as you spin. But what I really wanted to show you is, once we get to these puffs, so I'm going to let that coil on there. Once I get to this puff, I'm going to go down to the bottom and give it a twist in the direction that it's spun to really get it spun up nice and tight. You see that? Then I'm going to let it oops, spin. Then as I, as I spin the wheel, I'm going to let it coil onto the core yarn. Maybe even give it a little push up. You see that? Alright, so let me get to the next one so I can show you. Here's the next one. I'm taking my fingers, kind of twisting it back in the, in the direction it was spun to give it a little bit more spin. And then we'll let it coil onto the core yarn. I can even give it a little push to make it tighter. You see that? Let's do it again. So you can see I'm holding my yarn, um, the yarn I want on top almost at a 90 degree angle. I want it down just a little bit. If it's this, if it's completely 90 degrees, it's just going to layer on top of itself on the core. But if it's a little bit lower, then it will guide itself onto the core yarn. All right, here's a little puff. Let's get this one going. See how that curls right up? Boop. This is a lot of fun to do when your core yarn is something crazy or sparkly or bright, um, and then you've got that core yarn showing through right here. Again, if you spin your yarn, this was spun really fine. If you spin it a little bit, thicker then you can cover up the core if you want or you can make it so you specifically have the core showing through. Alright so this is a long puff. I'm twisting it now at the end and let's let that roll on. There we go.
So if you spun your original yarn, S twist, then you're going to want to core spin it, Z twist, in the other direction. Because if you don't, it's going to become so crimped that it'll just curl back up on itself. Um, that's also another reason why you're going to want to twist, give a little twist to your puff before you get it started on your core yarn. Because if you don't, it's going to really come undone and it won't fluff up as much as it should or coil up as much as it should around your core. See, once I get to it, it's really not very spun at all. I could probably just pull it apart. So I'm going to go back and give it some twist. I'm just twisting it up in my fingers. See, and you can even do that while you're spinning, once you get the hang of it, and then you'll spin it right onto it. You can leave it just like this if you want, or you can give it a little push up, make it look more like a little hive. All right, I'm gonna stop here because I wanna show you how to do the same thing on wire. So I'm gonna break this white core yarn, make myself a little slip knot like that. And I'm gonna put some wire in. And what I've got is 26 gauge bead wire. It's the same thing I used in the core spinning video just before this. I'm gonna put it through that slip knot and pull it tight. Okay, so there we go. Now this will be my core. Okay, I'm gonna just let that fall to the side and start myself spinning again. Now you can do this from the beginning if you want to spin with wire without having to um, spin on yarn. First just attach your wire to your leader yarn from your spinning wheel. You'll probably need to set the tension a little bit tighter because the wire just does not go through as easily. But you're going to do the exact same thing. When you come to it, coil it up and push it. Now this wire, because it's so uh, slippery, you can slide the whole thing up and just make lots and lots of coils if you want. And then you don't see, you don't actually see the wire underneath.
The wire might have a hard time going onto your spinning wheel, so you may, onto the bobbin, so you may have to just twist the bobbin to kind of get it on there. Um, you can't do a whole lot of wire at one time, just because it doesn't, doesn't coil up on the wheel as easily as yarn does. But you can do enough to make a bracelet or a necklace or coarse spin some yarn for earrings. See how it's not going on now. So I'm going to feed it on there. And that's it. And then when you're done, you just break that wire, break the yarn. You can kind of wrap the yarn around the end if you want so it's not pointy. Fold it up a little bit. You can trim the rest of that off. And then you've got your wire spun yarn. So I'll take this all off the bobbin and show you what it looks like. of a bracelet that I did the same way and then I just coiled it up around a mason jar and wrapped the ends up at the bottom. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.